I think we are recording. Mark, you are Australia's leading psychiatrist. <laughs> you are officially. <laughs> I'm not going to take that moniker. Oh my God, what will my colleagues think? Anyway. It's really nice when other people say, say it about you. And uh, imagine this. If someone said to you five years ago, you're going to be a best-selling author. I, l- I love writing, but bloody hell, no. I know. If anyone five years ago had said turning 50 would be the highlight of your life and things can only get better. You're the wow. leading psychiatrist and have best-selling books. So this leads nicely onto uh, your latest book, which is all about anxiety, called anxiety, because you are, um, and I know uh, it, it just feels so strange to say it, a really anxious person who deals with anxiety. But of course, that makes you an absolute expert because you have anxiety. Uh, yeah, I, I never thought that having anxiety was going to be positive. <laughs> Although it's interesting, you know, that confluence of age and experience and wisdom, hopefully a little bit of wisdom, because I've had anxiety since I was four. So, and, and you know, my mother's anxious, my grandmother was in treatment for anxiety. So it runs in the family. And somebody asked me the other day, what's, what, what, what's positive about having anxiety, right? I mean, there has to be some positivity about this. There has to be a sort of evolutionary positivity. Why, why do people get anxious? Well, it's to perform. We, we do need anxiety to perform. And I actually perform fairly well, even though there's a constant ruminating loop in the back of my mind going, oh, what crap is he talking now? Why are people listening? Oh, all this sort of stuff. And that's welcome to the anxious brain. <laughs> Big breath. Uh, but yes, so that's that's makes me, I suppose, quite uniquely placed when we're talking about anxiety. Now, my anxiety that I deal with, and not that I personally deal with, because I'm very blessed, I'm not an anxious person, but given my TV background, and now the fact that I train people to be able to speak, you know, in front of large crowds, at seminars, uh, you know, if they are pitching for venture capital, if they're the CEO, or, you know, uh, I deal, given TV as well, uh, it's all about a kind of specific type of anxiety, which is performance anxiety and also work anxiety. So it's all the world of anxiety. But I think somehow uh, I've just managed to cope. Although maybe I haven't, and I'm completely bonkers, and all of my friends like you are talking about me, and I have no idea, <laughs> which is very possible. There's a lot in there, Maz, but <laughs> I will say one thing. We do need anxiety, and that's why people get confused as to what anxiety disorder is and what is just so-called normal anxiety. I always say normal because I hate that term. You know, I never use it. We all get anxious. So that fight or flight response in the body, heart rate going, you know, getting a bit faster in our thoughts and actions, which we need to perform. It's very, very rare for somebody to just be so chill before a big performance or a presentation. The big difference I would say, is you get that anxiety when you haven't got anything to perform for. So you're just sitting there drinking a cup of herbal tea and all of a sudden you get an anxiety attack. That's the core difference. Of course, what you just described, sorry, in terms of anxiety, is you you haven't got anxiety, but you do get stress. And people also get confused with stress and anxiety. It's not the same thing. Stress can cause anxiety and increase your anxiety but stress can also cause your body to go completely run down and then the cold sores pop up and horrible little things like that that people don't generally go, hey, I don't feel anxious, but my body is telling me that I need to, whoa, slow down a bit. That, that, that's another thing, you know. Now, I should probably explain to our listener, I like to just do it in the singular, and our watcher, I like to do our viewer, uh, that this is a podcast about anxiety. It's not just that we pressed Zoom by mistake and then posted it by mistake. We are actually doing this, <coughs> excuse me, deliberately, amazingly. And it is a weekly podcast uh, about anxiety called The Anxious Shrink because Mark is the anxious shrink. And um, what is anxiety? I know once before when we had our only one and only glass of wine, because we only had one in our lives ever, uh, that you were talking, you told me a brilliant story about anxiety and our body and fight and flight and a bear. Yes, the bear, the poor bear. I love bears. 
But basically, it, came, it comes back to that evolutionary thing, right? We have a fight or flight system in our body. It's about survival. That's really what anxiety is about. It's survival. So you're sitting around the campfire, and all of a sudden, this big bear comes running towards you. Well, the next thing you know, you've run a kilometer and jumped over a seven-foot wall. And you went, bloody hell, how did I do that? And it's this autonomic nervous system. So this is the system in our, in our body linked to our nervous system that reacts. It's like a reflex reaction. You can't think about it. So you're not sitting there going, oh, there's a, bo- a bear coming towards me. What should I do now? <laughs> so you, you know, you, the sphincters absolutely clench. The blood goes to your limbs. Your pupils dilate. Your heart rate goes. And boom, off you go. The problem is with anxiety, you get those symptoms when there's no bear. Yes, that is the big difference. Now, uh, one could say the bear difference, but let's not go any further in the bear I, metaphor. I it's there. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, maybe it was last week, uh, you and Alison, our producer, she wasn't in a bar uh, drinking wine, uh, we had a meeting and she. Uh, we were talking about putting something on Facebook and I think she'd read somewhere that when you Google anxiety, something like is it 18 million hits come up or something. We're more anxious than we've been this century. And the whole COVID thing, we're very nervous about going back to work. We're nervous about everything. So I put something on Facebook, which is where I get all my news in my life, uh, and put a post saying, what's making you anxious? And there were really bizarre things. Like, I'm a little bit anxious about the fact that I've had to have never been in my life. And it's not an enormously big deal, obviously, except that it's a bit annoying. And I really was going to do every course in the world, read every book, uh, have fantastic long hair, shiny nails, a boyfriend, you know, a dog, a really tidy apartment, and I've done nothing. I've just eaten my way through it. What made you anxious? Or, um, during COVID, and what are you anxious about now? Well, again, it just, just you bring up so many things there, Maz. It's, it's it's true. What what I've been saying to people, and when I've been doing some media stuff and whatever, this time isn't supposed to be about emerging chrysalis like as a better person. Hey, if that's a side effect, that's fantastic. This was about us going. Hey, as a country and a community, we have to look after each other. We have to survive this. The best way forward, really is to try and you know bring the curve down, so flatten that curve, and actually not die and not kill our elderly. I mean, that's really what it was about. So, of course, that makes you quite anxious anyway, thinking every time you say hello to an old person that you might be you know, transmitting something. But the anxiety, the anxiety that I felt was about the whole decade uh, that we've just started. I mean, fires, floods, Now this, this coronavirus, and of course it hasn't gone away. We have done incredibly well in Australia. I'm so proud of being Australian, it's wonderful. But we have not eliminated this virus. Until we get a vaccine, we can't say that we're out of the woods. And look, you know, there's another spike in in Victoria, things like that. And actually during the, the, the initial lockdown, I was fairly okay, actually. I got anxious about traveling around, so I had to do that for work. So that made me anxious, and, and, and I, find, I found that stressful. But now there's a different kind of, of, of anxiety, and it's about whether we're going back too quickly and what's going to happen around the corner. That, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm anxious about. There were, uh, on the Facebook post, there were, and Alison's just sent a message to say 36 billion so thank God she's here. <laughs> it's like the big news. I don't know. I think it was seven people said they were anxious. It was 36 billion. Uh, so she's obviously not started day drinking yet. That's good, isn't it? Um, the post on Facebook was split into ludicrously kind of silly, you know, first world ones, and then some quite serious ones. What's your silly anxiety? Mine is so ridiculous but it is just slightly bothering me. <laughs> and it's this, that you can't test makeup anymore. I know that's so stupid. It's so stupid. But I went to buy a concealer because uh, Alison punched me in the face, not really. I had a small bruise. 
and uh, I just had dabbed it down. Uh, and I thought, I need a concealer. And I went to a shop, the, the, everything was sealed away. And I thought, oh God, we won't be able to try makeup anymore. Not a big deal, a tiny deal. So well, that's my stupid one. Well, again, you know, I, a lot of my patients, and of course it's about judging ourselves. And of course, with anxiety, everything we think is silly and nonsense. I mean, that's part of the negative loop that goes around in our heads and constant self-critique. So I say to anyone who says something like that to me, it's not silly or stupid at all. It's about what, you know, is important to you and then how you can sort of cope with that or how best to move forward. But in terms of silly, it's, 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 it's interesting. I try and separate things, but of course it all seems silly to me especially when I'm locking my bedroom door at night and when I'm on my own at home. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, right? So some of the silly things with COVID, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I honestly can't. Now, now I'm feeling anxious because I can't, <laughs> of a silly, I can't think of a silly... Because, you know, I, actually, this has been an incredibly useful time for me and a, and a wonderful time to self-reflect. And so... I'm really enjoying not driving all the time. That's a real, real plus for me. And being able to connect like this and see all my patients via telehealth and have a wonderful sort of sense of community via the, the screen, that, that's amazing. Um, so, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you about the silly stuff, but on a serious note, and, you know, maybe that's because I'm 55 this year and thinking about my future and my son's future. Z this planet, this planet is the only one we've got. People yeah. don't seem to understand that or, or we, we, we're in denial about it. So I think this year has brought a rude awakening to hopefully all of us and gone, wow, there's a message. This is a message. There's a wonderful, you know, Jane Goodall is one of my favorite people on the planet and she says it down the line, right? You don't, you don't, wear, you don't mess with the woman who's shaking... Baboons, hands, or whatever, or gorillas, right? So, and she said, if we fail to listen to what the earth is telling us now, we are doomed as a species. If that isn't enough to make you more anxious, I don't know what is. But we That's have made to. Absolutely everybody extraordinarily anxious now. <laughs> I yes. you that my anxiety is about the fact that my age group has done this. I feel really embarrassed about it. When I see young people and anyone talks about you know, anything to do with the world and the state of the world, I think, oh, God, that, I let that happen on my watch and it really bothers me. I don't have children, so really I should be just, you know, my ashes, throw them anywhere. But it really does bother me, I think. Why don't I fight a bit more? Because I, so, I sort of saw it happening, but I didn't do anything about it, you know, as part of the waste generation. And... That does make me a little bit anxious, I think. Ah, you know, I could have tried a bit harder and made it a little bit of a better place for your children, my friends' kids. I don't know, but you know, Maz, I, I was thinking about that as well. When I grew up, and so I'm 55, so I'm hanging into Generation X on the last year. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not letting go of that, right? I'm not a boomer. But we had glass bottles. We had paper bags. We took bottles back and recycled them. We were not a wasteful generation. So I think that needs a little bit more tweaking out, I have to say. When that started, when all of a sudden we started getting all these plastic things made in China. I mean, that's, that's where we, we absolutely have to look at it. One of the posts, uh, one of my favourite posts, and Alison and I were talking about this afterwards, and I think you saw it too, was a guy, I think his name's Tom Andrews, and he said what's making him anxious is that we might go back and things won't change. And that one really, it hit me like someone had dropped a bag of fish on me. I was like, man, you're right. I worry about old people as well. I worry that we we're really worried about them. And now maybe they're gonna be invisible again, that we're not going to go and visit them. And we did, we kind of worried about the old people down our street. And I think that's something I really would keep an eye on. I think, yeah, I will go and visit old people. You know, again, I'm trying, I'm trying to be light and, and think of some silly things, here, but I, I just can't. I mean, you know, it's, it's, quite a, it's a quite a thing, right? So with the old people, a whole lot of old people now have, because we've reached out and, and um, spoken to them, have gone, this is amazing. Um, no one's been doing this for a while. 
So we've got to look at how we were operating as a society and gone, wow, old people are really important. And at least we and New Zealand, opposite to England, with you know them going, oh, let's get herd immunity. What herd immunity means with this virus is that you kill off your elderly. There's absolutely no debate about it. So we've at least gone, you know what, we value our old people. So that's amazing. So what three pieces of advice could you give, Dali? Three very practical pieces of advice, because we did say that we're going to uh, dish out some anxiety advice that might make you anxious, so we probably should at some point. Uh, what are the three practical tips that you can give us? Well, I'll try. I'll, I'll give you tips that I'm using myself, right, because sometimes I, I give advice oh, okay. and then... And then John spits out his wine because it sounds like I'm really a guru leading this wonderful, you know, uh, COVID uh, isolation life. Walking. I have gone for more walks in the last two months than I have in the last year. It's wonderful. Keeping you, look amazing. you look really healthy. You look like you've lost weight. It's completely worked. But coming to the more practical things, not about longer term, but at the moment, walking. That extra hour, if you're working from home, does not belong to your boss. It belongs to you. So when you are commuting, you're not working. You're getting ready for work. That's a perfect time to go for a walk, connect with your loved ones, breathe, stretch, do some nice things. It's lovely getting that time in the morning to prepare for your day. It really does, it really does help. And I know it helps me as well when I don't roll out of bed and rush around and then get in my car because then I'm more stressed because I'm late. And so it's about planning. That is, that is key. So stick to a sleep routine. That is, that is, it really does work. So go to bed at the same time every night, wake up the same time every morning, try it for the week. Don't eat too late. So about three to four hours before you go to sleep. And as I say, in the morning, go for a walk, talk to someone. If you live on your own, go for a walk and then call someone. So do some exercise, do a little bit of planning. Uh, cut down on stimulants, I guess. So I'm trying to stick to three, but it's uh, absolute, you know, <laughs> and here I, <laughs> so we, can, we, can, we, don't want to do, we don't want to do it all in one go, right? Six. <laughs> as I drink my coffee. So with the stimulants, yeah, absolutely, no more than four coffees a day. Four's a magic number for coffee and alcohol in one sitting, actually. We'll, we'll come to that maybe some other time. But sleep is so good. Everyone in TV always says this. If you are getting enough sleep, you can cope with anything. Sleep is pivotal to our day, and it's pivotal to mood, especially anxiety. Yes. You are indeed Australia's leading psychiatrist. I think you have proved that this morning, and also very charming and very attractive. Oh, you lovely man! But I will. I'll leave you with. I'll leave you with one thought that I that I'm sharing with everyone. Cinderella. I love Cinderella. So her view, her views on this, and her sort of lovely catchphrase: have you. courage, have um, courage, and be kind, and be kind to yourself. That that that's that's something to look at in the next week as well. Sorry, do you mind saying that again? Because I talked over you. So do the Cinderella bit again. So Cinderella, have courage and be kind. And that includes being kind to yourself. So Cinderella said, have courage and be kind. Have courage and be kind. That is so beautiful. It's just a wonderful film because also it's about resilience. We talk about resilience. So maybe we can talk about that next week's podcast. Resilience is key to surviving and being a better person. Okay. Uh, when do you know... If you need help, and if this has raised issues for uh, our viewer. Yeah, I always say, anything I've said, and at any time, if this raises issues for you, speak to someone. It doesn't matter who you speak to, actually. If you haven't got a friend or you, a loved one, reach out and phone one of the helplines. So my top three, really, Lifeline, Say in Australia, and beyond blue, and there's always someone there, and there's a 24-7 connectivity, use it. That is beautiful. You are fantastic. If, uh, any, if our viewer uh, would like us to talk about something else next week that is uh, about anxiety or resilience or whatever, 
happen if it's on your mind, uh, please go to the theanxiousshrink.com and tell us, or go to our Facebook page, The Anxious Shrink. It's a good thing that I had coffee and not a drink, because that's quite difficult to say. I'm breaking mm. the tea then for someone <laughs> We can talk about day drinking too later, but hey, that uh, Maz is always lovely talking to you, and it's great having this, and, and hopefully, you know. Always a job. Should we do it next week? I hope, yes, absolutely. But, but again, just adding to what you just said, ask anything, people. Ask anything. Don't hide. Even if it sounds silly, because that's the thing. Don't hold back. Just ask it, and we'll discuss it. Yes, because he is Australia's leading psychiatrist for a very good reason. We'll see you next week, viewer. Oh, nice to you, darling. Bye, darling. Bye.